Pat Falvey here. <clears throat> and today what I want to speak about is packing for Mount Elbrus. It's the highest mountain in Europe and it's set, situated in the central Caucasus. It stands at 5,642 metres and it's one of the seven summits. Indeed, if uh, none of you have actually climbed snow and ice peaks before, this is the ideal one to start with. So let's start about what we're going to be wearing. Uh, in reality, it's all the standard trekking gear that you may already have if you're into hill walking. So let me go through it and what I'll do, we have a range of stuff here on the table and as I'm going through some of it, I will move them into the packs. So just take it if it's a case we're going away climbing Mount Elbrus. Usually what we will need is we will need a duffel sack. Usually approximately 100 to 120 litres. And I'll go through all of this now with you at a later stage in the next section of the video to show you how to pack it. Also, in relation to your rucksack, lots of people get this very wrong. You need between a 35 to 45 litre rucksack to cater for all the packing that you require to, to do while you're actually climbing this mountain. And here is a standard type of uh, a day rucksack, approximately 35 litres. It has ice axe holders, it has crampon holders and it has lots of room inside and it's a straight cut. So just let's start off. So Elbrus, it has lots of different climate changes in it. On the lower regions it will stand between 20 and 35 degrees Celsius so you have to cater for that. As we move up the mountain and go into Arctic conditions which we will live for for a number of days we also have to have all of the gear required for cold conditions and as well as this we'll also need some technical gear the likes of ice axe, crampon, harness, some crabs and a cow and tail uh, sling. So if it's a case we require fixed rope techniques that we can actually use that. So let's start down below. Usually what I will do is I'll use my standard trekking pants and I'm usually wearing this when I go out. And the main reason for this, not jeans or anything like that, is that if they get wet the jeans, they won't dry. These are ideal for drying and also some of these are ultraviolet protected. So this I will be wearing. So I'm just going to put this down here. Also, I usually carry three t-shirts and usually these t-shirts are made up of dry flowing material or a, a wicking material the likes of smart wool. So for this I usually have <coughs> three t-shirts I usually wear one and I, again I'm going to just put this down here just to put it out of the way and I carry two more you know in the event of sweating. As well as this I carry a second trekking pants in case the first gets wet so therefore I have two t-shirts one trekking pants and that's mainly for the lower regions. I usually use a layering system you know, as we're going up the mountain. And what I want to get out of the way first is the type of fleeces and the type of thermal insulations that we use. Usually, I will carry a jacket like this. It's a very light fleece. And I usually carry that in my rucksack, my day rucksack. And I'm just going to put it away because I'm wearing a gilet. And if it's fine, this is what I will be wearing. So in my rucksack, I'm just going to pack away you know, my fleece for now, just to get it off the table. As well as this, I also carry, you know, windstop gear. It, it can also be rain gear. But this is the typical type of one that I will use, you know, for lower down and higher up the mountain. Uh, it's usually full zipped, so I can get in and out with my big boots easily without actually having to take my boots off. And this is very, very important. So I carry that at all times in my rucksack, you know, whether it's lower down or higher up. So again, I'm just going to pack this away. And I usually wear a very good Gore-Tex jacket or a, a rain jacket that is very suitable. So here we are. This is, you need a good rain jacket. And this usually I carry every day because the weather in the Elbrus region, you know, can be fairly, um, different. It's like in Ireland really, you can get rain, snow, hail, you know, any day. So I usually carry that as well in my rucksack every day. 
So as we go up the mountain, the snow and the ice um, that are up there, we require uh, glasses uh, for the ultraviolet light. And usually it's very, very important to ensure that you have a category three uh, sunglass. I usually carry two. So there's one, two, and I always carry one of those in my day bag uh, for during the day in case I'm actually looking at snow and ice. Then as we get up into the colder regions, it's very important that you stay warm. So I use a layering system and usually I use long sleeve like this, either uh, thermal wool, dry flow, smart wool to ensure that I stay warm. So I can usually like layer one, two, three, one on top of the other as it gets colder. I'm a firm believer in the layering system. So I use a light, a medium and a heavy thermal uh, tops. So you can see them here. So there's the tree. So all of these now like will be packed away at a later stage, either into a stuff sack or into a sack where I can get at all of those. As it gets colder, what happens is we have a tendency to lose most of the heat through our hands, our head and our feet. Also, one of the most important aspects in the head and around our face is that we're protected from the ultraviolet light. And usually like I'd use a, a factor 50, very strong cream. Indeed, I got a melanoma here myself from not protecting myself enough. So it's very, very important that when you're doing that to protect yourself. So let's talk about sun protection. Well, what I usually use lower down to ensure that my neck is covered and my ears uh, is a hat like this, you know, like a safari hat, which protects all of my back, my ears, and then I'm factor 50 on the front. And I always carry that in my standard day bag. For the cold, as we're going up, and we start moving up, you know, like to very cold, I can use a scarf, which is just actually put around me and I can actually just use it to uh, cover myself and also use it as a face mask. Um, I also use a buff, which are very handy. So if you have a buff and the buffs are like really, really handy because whether it's lower down or higher up, they are very light. And as you can see here, I can just use it as a semi balaclava and when it gets colder, just put a beanie on and I'm fairly warm. So that's the beanie. This is the buff. And as we go higher again then for my face, I usually use uh, a balaclava if it's getting very cold. So here's a standard lightweight balaclava and as you can see how easy it is to put on. And basically I'm finished. And then if it gets very cold and the windshield goes up, I have a thicker one just like this. So that's all of my headgear, completely finished. And that's all I need. As you can see now, it's packing down fairly comfortable. One of the other places that we're going to lose heat is through our hands. So it's very, very important to protect them. Also in the event of frostbite. So I usually start with a light pair of uh, fleece gloves, as you can see here. And then as we go higher up the mountain, and if it's a case it gets colder, I have um, a different type one. It's like a windstop glove, which is like this. And then as it gets colder again, I like to keep these together. I use a mitt. Now on some of the mitts, as you can see here, I like them to be big. I also like an elastic on them so that in the event of a wind, I can just put the elastic on like this and just put my glove into it. Now, I need to be dexterous to be able to work at stuff. So therefore, as you can see now, I can work with it here or here. But as it gets colder, I like the, you know, my hands to be warmer again. And then I use a fleece mitt, as you will see here. And that fleece mitt goes on like this. And then for cold, I can just put it into here. Now that's basically all of the layering systems that I use in relation to keeping my hands warm. And this is a very handy idea if you put it on. So that's all my glove system. And usually I just keep these out and I put them into my day bag. 
and I put the other ones away and packed them away so that when I'm in the huts, uh, we're going to stay in two types of places, the hotels lower down and the huts higher up. So as you see here, you know, this is all packing down fairly nice to pack away. For my feet is another uh, point of where the cold will actually, you know, get to. So what I do is I usually bring three pair of expedition socks like the Torlo or Smartwools, again, and I usually bring three liners. Now on top of that, don't forget to bring some underwear. I usually bring two sets of underwear and I just pack them away here. And for night in the hut, I bring a head torch and also for climbing in the night. And I also bring a spare one in case. So I'm just going to put these away here. Now, all of these are listed in our packing list. Um, so now we have our feet, we have our hands, we have our thermals and, um, you know, all sorted out. We have our glasses. And as we get higher on the mountain, uh, we may, when we're going to the summit, also need some more warmer gear. Now, usually what I bring is, like I, I bring a thermal long johns or a power fleece just like this one. And usually I put them away. Now, a lot of the time I don't use those all the times, it's only if it goes down. Now, over all of those, because it will get cold and it can get cold, I like a warm down jacket. And here we can see here, and this is packed away until we need it. And you know, these are very handy at night as well in the hut. So this is an expedition down jacket, as you can see, it's fairly bulky. And I'll show you later how we can pack this away. So it really, really packs down. So a good down jacket is very, very important. And that should look after us now, like for all of the warm gear. And as you can see, it's fairly tidy. The gear nowadays is, you know, very, very compact. Uh, when we're going up high on the snow, what I'd also recommend is that you bring a goggles. Because if there's a blizzard out and we want to ensure that we get to summit, a goggles is very handy to have over and above the standard type of glasses that we would have generally for snow and ice. So I think that looks after all of that. So now let's take a look at our feet. When we're lower down or when we're in the airports, it's very handy to have a pair of trekking shoes. Like I, you know, I don't bring any other type of shoes. I just bring trekking shoes because they're very handy and I'm wearing them going through. So it doesn't set any alarms off in the airport or anything like that. So these shoes I will be wearing. So I'm just going to put these down here with the other stuff I will be wearing. Now, when we get to Terskal or Chiget or Azu, we will be doing a couple of days trekking. So it's very important that you bring a standard pair of trekking boots. These trekking boots, by the way, I use here in Ireland. Uh, I, I like leather boots myself and I've used them on Kilimanjaro, trekking in the Himalayas. So a standard pair of trekking boots that you probably already have. But as we go up onto the ice, it will change a bit because of the fact these leather boots will not keep you warm and we would be in fear of you getting frostbite. So these ones are for trekking on the lower regions. We have three or four days of which we'll be doing standard trekking. So we can keep those, you know, with us at all times. Then as we get up onto the snow and ice, you can hire all of the gear, including the down jacket, the down mitts, because they're fairly expensive, and including a plastic boot. Now, this is a typical hired plastic boot, and it's fairly hard, as you can see, and this is, will adapt to your crampons and, you know, so that you can put them on. And you can hire these outside. Now, for myself and lots of people that do a lot of climbing, we would prefer the integrated boot something like this. This is a Scarpa 6000, you know, very, very comfortable. It has a gator on the outside, so it closes everything in. If you only have the plastic boot, may I suggest that you bring a gator or that you'd have a very good uh, rain pants so that it protects and the snow doesn't get in here. So that's our boots, now all protected. Ah, uh, look. Freddy, this is actually one of our mascots. He's been all around the world with us. So he's just keeping his eye on, on me here to make sure that I don't forget anything. So now that we have the boots sorted out, we're going to have to walk on the boots. And if it's icy, we need crampons. 
and again these can be hired. We usually use 12 pointed crampons and as you can see they're like lethal weapons and we do training courses here at the lodge in Scotland and the Alps, you know, for people that would like to walk on crampons and ice axe uh, and learn the other techniques just actually contact us below on our email or on our phone number. So when we're carrying our crampons and ice axes, these 12 pointed lethal weapons, we usually put them in a bag and I've just done this here packed and all in relation to the safety and as you can see you know they're quite safe and I'll show you later in the packing how we pack these away. Uh, ice axe. Again you can either bring them from Ireland or from America or from wherever you're coming or we can hire them outside but please let us know. Like as you see like I like an ice axe that just about tips my ankle, mainly because of the fact that we're traversing uphill and it's easier than a standard walking axe, which is a lot longer. So therefore, like if you look at here, if I was to fall, I could just catch it across my chest and do a nice axe breaking um, maneuver. Uh, we will be doing this on the ice outside and we also do it here in Ireland, here at the Mountain Lodge, if it's a case you want to do a session with it. So here we are, ice axe, crampons and then we're going to need a harness. Now I like to have a web harness and this is a very light harness and like big legs so that we can just slip through them in our boots and we'll also be carrying tree crabs and a cow's tail so that if we're doing fixed rope techniques and you can see here this is just tree crabs and a piece of sling and of course we can put all those and hire them outside as well. So if you have any questions whatsoever in relation to the technicality of the stuff that we're using, please give me a ring. So here we are. This is the harness, the crampons, the ice axe, and also I bring a spare sling for safety. All, like we will have all the, uh, if we need ropes, we will have them outside. Uh, also carry two ski poles and make sure that the baskets are wide enough so that they don't actually go through the snow and ice. Um, now, let's move, we're going to move, you know, up the mountain and we're going to move from a hotel into, into cabins, like they're called the barrels or they're called cabins. It usually actually sleeps about four people or eight people in these cabins and they're fairly comfortable but you know, they will have a, a mattress. It could be an inch or two inch mattress. But if it's a case that you wish for extra comfort, you know, I, well, I always do on a, I just bring a therma wrist, you know, pack it into my bag, it'll fit. And uh, that will keep you comfortable. Now for sleeping, it can get cold up here. So I recommend a comfort minus 15 degree sleeping bag. Now you have two types, you have down or synthetic. You know, I use both. Um, when I can get away with it and I know it's going to be dry, I use a down bag and this is my down bag, believe it or not, like this is, this is huge and I can compress it down into this size. The synthetic will be a little bit bigger, uh, but the whole thing about it is about stuffing the sack in, not folding them. So make sure you have a warm sleeping bag because if you don't sleep properly and you're too cold, then it's going to take energy from you and it's going to affect your final summit, summit day. So here we are, that's nearly all of this done. Um, now we're talking about rehydration. Usually you should be drinking four liters of water per day. I, you can use um, a platypus. I don't myself because as you go higher up, it will freeze. But even if, as you're going higher up, you will require two Nalogen bottles. Like that's two wide neck bottles that, uh, you know, that will mean that you can actually drink from the top when you need it wide necked, whereas the, the platypus is freezes. I also bring one of those, but I mark it as a pee bottle because it saves me getting out of the hut at night to go outside to go to the toilet. So I usually bring two Nalogen bottles and a pee bottle. And as well as that, for the cold days, when I'm out trekking and, you know, moving up and down, acclimatizing, I just bring a small flask. So there's something hot, you know, to, to drink. So that's that. Now, as a first aid, what I do be recommend, what I would recommend is that you bring 
a survival shelter, like it's a, it's a plastic bag or a heat warm thermal blanket, uh, just to have it in your rucksack. Your own personal first aid kit. Now, when we're on the mountain, we will have our own mountain first aid kits as a communal, but for your personal stuff, please all the time keep it close to you. Um, some chlorine tablets, you know, just to have them. Um, a knife, I always carry a knife, but you know what? I've had so many knives taken from me at airports, you wouldn't believe it. So like, just make sure you pack it into your main bag. As I said, the sun cream, and then on top of that, sanitizer, because hygiene is very, very important to make sure that you're actually, you know, don't get a bug or anything like that, because that can take you straight out. Um, and then, you know, I always carry a whistle myself because it's a very easy form of communication when you're on the mountain, like, you know, and just actually like put it around yourself so that you will have it at all times that if, you know, that you were caught in the mist or anything like that, that you can go <laughs> and basically we can hear you. Um, for repairs, you know, to your boots or your clothes, a bit of duct tape and uh, a couple of ties so that we can use it. And in the event, some string. And, you know, I think that's, about it that you'll require for Elbrus. Uh, you know, all the different expeditions require uh, different gear, but this is now just about enough that will get you through Mount Elbrus. So on that note, this is Pat Falvey for this section of this video blog, signing off, thanking you very much. Don't forget, if you need anything, just contact us at our phone number, uh, plus three five three six four six six four four one eight one, or indeed just email us, where me and my staff, right, okay, we'd only be too delighted to help you. So back next with packing.